Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Rader and in this video we will examine the Unit 1 assessment for economics. This video is for students who may be looking for some tips and strategies for how to design a game uh, so that they can demonstrate their knowledge of credit and debt. So in this unit assessment, uh, which will likely take place over the course of a few days, uh, your teacher will have you consider what you learned in the credit cards and debt case study as you were trying to develop a solid credit history and to then apply that to create a game of some kind to illustrate your growing understanding of personal finance and how we can make um, wise decisions to help us solve various economic problems. So if you need further support for the credit card and debt case study, I suggest looking at the credit card and debt case study video in the series uh, available on YouTube. And in this video, we'll take a quick look at the slides for day 26, and then we'll look at the unit assessment itself. So the first thing that I, I would like you to consider, and I'm sure your teacher will say the same thing if you are seeing your teacher either in person or over uh, Zoom um, virtually, is to really think about uh, maybe what, what were some of your favorite games growing up, favorite board games or card playing games, and to really consider like, what made those games particularly fun or engaging. And if you there were games that you didn't like, think about like, what was not interesting about those games or what were some of the things that made them less engaging for you as a player to really want to uh, engage with. So when designing a game for personal finance, you want to keep that in mind because ultimately your goal will be to share your knowledge of personal finance with a series of steps that your classmates could then employ themselves to learn more about uh, credit and debt. So looking at the assessment itself, uh, the big question that we'll look at is how can I identify, assess, and represent the factors that influence a credit person's credit. So we wanna think about it in terms of an economics problem. So we want to examine these concepts like scarcity, opportunity costs, and, and the idea of, of markets to really think about how we could put our learning of economics into action. So to that end, you'll be answering three questions as you design your game. And the three questions that you'll answer are, what is credit? How do you establish credit? And what are the challenges and biases of the credit and debt system? So to do this, you can refer to the annotated bibliography that you looked at in your credit cards and debt case study. Uh, and conversely, you could look at these hyperlinks that are included for uh, these three questions in the unit uh, summative assessment. So in terms of what you'll do, you'll end up designing a game based on either an established model of a game. So for example, you may want to open a new tab and, and Google Monopoly board game to see how that uh, board game is established. Or you could uh, look up uh, personal finance bingo, for example. There are several versions that are widely available online. And once you've decided on the kind of game that you want to create, you then want to design the game and, and consider like what are either the rules of the game that you're going to use uh, and or how do you want to present this to your classmates. So when we think about these aspects of personal finance, we want to really consider how can we as define establishing good credit through the lens of economics, really think back to the credit card and uh, debt case study. So especially look at the section on that, that T-chart that looked at the wise and unwise decisions one can make and how it can affect their credit, right? So that's really what we wanna consider. Now, in terms of actually designing something specifically, for example, if we look at the Monopoly board game, they have what they call chance cards. So maybe instead of having one where a player moves forward on the board game, where they look at, for example, take a walk on the boardwalk, perhaps you give them a card that says advance to an 800 credit score, which would be considered excellent credit that they could then use to access uh, different borrowing um, programs. So for example, maybe you want to have you, the players in your game uh, buy purchase a home and they wanna get access to a mortgage, or maybe they're looking to finance the purchase of a new car, right? And the better their credit is, the more likely they will be to get access to that loan because they're considered a lower risk to the lending institution, right? So those are the things that I, I think would be useful if we all considered. Then you wanna create the representation of your game. So this is where your teacher hopefully will allow you some flexibility in terms of creating an interactive experience. So it could be the creation of playing cards. It could be the drawing of a game board. 
Um, it could be done on a Google slideshow where you create different steps or different stages, so to speak, uh, where your classmates can then learn what happens if they make different decisions. Um, and then really you wanna, hopefully you're given time to present your game to the class so that everybody can learn uh, not just what you did, but that you could also learn from your classmates as well. And really the, the big takeaway that I would like you to hopefully get from this video is that you want to combine all of the economic terms that you've learned in the course of this unit. And each of those terms can really turn into either a playing card or it could turn into a spot on your game board. Really what you wanna be able to do is explain to anybody, think of it like you're explaining it to your sibling. They wanna learn about something for the first time and you wanna make it as fun as possible ideally so that they'll be engaged and that they'll wanna come back and learn more. All right, so that'll do it for today's mini lesson on credit and debt the game. Hope everybody has a fantastic day. Take care, everybody. Bye.